welcome. So two blocks, a bolster, and a blanket. And we're gonna get started on our blanket. So bring your blanket underneath your sit bones. Bring your feet forward, hands alongside your body. And begin to tip your knees back and forth. And every time you move and shift your legs across from one side of your body, also work to notice your rib cage if it's also moving so maybe you look and you shift your gaze over your opposite shoulders and now begin to integrate some arm reaches so as you shift your knees to one side also reach through a the, the opposite arm okay. if you shift to the right reach your right arm up and across your body now shift to the left, reach your arm up and across, okay, and allow your whole rib cage to rotate. And it's important that you also shift and use your eyes to look where you're rotating. So bring in that entire sensorial experience. All right now as we shift your knees to the right, Use your left hand and reach your fingertips forward and past your right toes. Any amount. Come back up and then shift and reach to the left side. Okay, a few more times at your pace, reaching. Maybe you lean over okay, in your down leg and you begin to get a little bit of a stretch through your hip. One more, come back up, reach, extend, and bow. Nice. All right, find your way onto your hands and knees for tabletop. Okay. And come down to your forearms. You can also have your forearms on a blanket okay, for a little bit more support. Keep your left forearm down, bring your right hand behind your head, okay? And make sure that you press your elbow into the mat and press your shoulder up and away from your left elbow. Okay, so maybe you try this on collapse, bring your shoulder down, and now press the floor away from you. Lift your left shoulder away from your left elbow. Okay, keep that integration, strong arm, right hand behind your head. Keep your pelvis where it's at and bring your right elbow to your left elbow. Round your spine. And now open, rotate. You're not gonna take a full rotation because your hips are gonna be steady. Right elbow to left elbow. And hug back up and open. One more, right elbow, left elbow. And reach back up. Slowly come down. Shift back, child's pose. and breathe out through your body okay, and shift back forward onto your forearms okay, just another option for you if it's hard to reach your left elbow to your right elbow this time maybe you bring your right forearm onto a block and you're gonna think the same thing don't collapse your shoulder down press and lift up and out of your right shoulder left hand behind your head Left elbow, right elbow. So essentially we created more space if you're using the block. Left elbow, right elbow, hug in and round the spine. And lift, left elbow high. One more, left elbow, right elbow. Okay, slowly release. Okay, this practice is gonna really be about opening up through our rib cage. Come back down, shift back, child's pose. Okay, reach your arms long and begin to notice sensation from your left wrist all the way through your left arm, maybe through your left hip and down. 
And then same thing on your right side. Press down into your hands. Hug your arm bones in. And notice lengthening through your right side body. And shift up, tabletop. And you step your left foot right outside of your left hand. And you bring your right hand underneath a block. And we're gonna do the same thing. Left hand behind your head, right hand on a block. Hug and round, right elbow in the direction of your right wrist or your right knee. Press into the floor. Open through your chest, shift your gaze. Okay, keep squeezing your outer hips in. Slowly come in, breathe in deeply, space in the back side of your body. And now exhale, lift and open through your chest. One more, hug in and round. Exhale to lift. Nice. Left hand down, right, uh, left knee back. Switch sides. Left hand underneath your left block. Step your right hand outside of your right hand. So the idea is we're fixing our pelvis so we don't move our pelvis so we can bring in spaciousness through the upper back. Left hand underneath the block, right hand to the back behind your head. Open through your chest and hug in and round. Press through your feet, press through your left shin. Open. Hug in and round. One more, lift and open. Good, hug in and round. Really work to dome through your spine. Okay, open this space through your inner costals, which is the space between all of your ribs. Right hand down, right knee comes back. Okay, move your block away from you. And shift into downward facing dog. Okay, and bend one knee and bend the other knee. Okay, keep pressing the floor away from you in downward facing dog. Spread your fingers wide. Bring your pinky fingers to the edge of your mat so you can create more space through your upper body. Press your heels down, knees bent. Spaciousness through one vertebrae to the other. Nice, come forward, high plank. Drop onto your knees and lower all the way down onto your mat. Low Cobra, hands alongside your rib cage. Scoop your chest up, press your feet down and see if you can press and roll through the outside edges of your feet. So if just your big toes are touching the earth, can you get your pinky, the tops of your pinky toes to press down? And keep lifting through your chest chin tucked, okay, forehead down, lift up tabletop, okay, you can do a half plank to table, nice, step your left foot between your hands this time, if you have two blocks, grab both blocks, or something that's going to give you some height, maybe you have your hands on books. Okay. Straighten your back leg. These are called functional flexors. So from here, notice the integration. Left foot presses down and now pull your right toes towards your left heel. So your inner leg line begins to fire up. Okay. Maybe you're on the highest height of your block so you can get more space. And now slowly drop your right knee down towards the earth. Maybe just like a quarter of an inch and I'll press your right leg back up towards the ceiling. Okay, slowly drop your right knee and press up. When you press up, really squeeze your right glute. Get a deep stretch through the right side of your front side thigh bone. Right knee down and right leg up. Good. Tip your hips back, straight in through your forward leg any amount. Bow down, pyramid pose. Let your head be heavy. Shake it out. And if you need to, you can step your back foot up, like two footprints, 
and really wide. So all of the, the whole bases of your feet are actually down on the earth. Yeah, nice adjustment. Okay, allow your chest to come down over your forward leg and breathe. Lengthen through your torso. Drop your blocks to the mid height. Okay. Step back for a high plank with your hands on top of your blocks. Get really strong here. Lower to your knees. Shift back, child's pose. If you have blocks, keep your hands on your blocks. This time, let your head come down. Let there be some spaciousness created on the back side of your body. Okay. Nice. Lift up. Step your right foot between your hands. Tuck your back toes of your left leg and straighten. Okay, again, you can take the highest height of your blocks. Okay. Bring awareness to fixing your pelvis. So when you're moving your knee, the pelvis doesn't move. It's not a big movement. So the only thing that's moving in functional flexors is your leg. Drop your left knee slightly, straighten your left leg. Okay, we're really working to strengthen and lengthen our front thigh. Drop and extend. One more, drop. Extend, shift your hips up towards the ceiling, drag your back foot in any amount, and bow over your forward leg. Nice. Nice. Lift up halfway. Move your blocks to the mid height. Step back for a high plank. Okay, hold and squeeze everything in. Press the crown of your head forward. As you press your heels back, stay high. Spread your fingers wide. Drop to your knees. This time, sit back on your heels. And we'll shake our arms out. Let our shoulders soften. So cross your arms over one another and then swing your arms and you can swing and bend the elbows up so the hands come behind the head. Just a little bit of a release there. All right, great work. Okay, let's work kneel to heel. Okay, so again, you're gonna want your blocks. Okay, from here, tuck your toes. Press into your blocks and pop your hips back so you're in a, in a lap lay. So your thighs are low, your chest is resting on your thighs. From here, you're gonna press into your feet to stand all the way up. So I'll go over this again so you can watch and we'll work. Bring your hands down, press your hips back. Press your hips back, press your hips back, lap lay. Chest all the way to the thighs neutral neck, hands to your blocks. Lift high onto your toes, shift forward, lower your knees to the earth, sit down. So if sitting on your heels, Evelyn, isn't, doesn't work, you can stay high. Let's, let's all just stay high if possible. And then we'll come back down, tuck the toes, pop your hips back, strong legs, strong glutes, stand up. So this is a really excellent practice to learn to get up and off of the floor with a little bit more power through the leg bones. Okay, shift your hips back. So hinge at your hips. Get your hips a little farther back, lap leg, hands down. Lift high onto your toes. How slowly can you lower to your knees? Untuck your toes, lift up for a kneeling shape. Okay. One more. Hands down. Tuck your toes. Pop your hips back. Inhale. Exhale to lift. Nice. 
All right, this time reach your arms up towards the ceiling. Hands to heart, pause. One more, reach up. Now you step your right foot behind your left. Bring your left hand to your right wrist and stretch over your left side body. Squeeze your inner thighs together so your pelvis doesn't move, but you can get rotation and flexion. So lean a little more forward to create flexion of your spine. Keep squeezing your legs. Nice. Slowly unwind, come up to standing. Okay. Shake the arms out for a moment and then we'll take the opposite side. Okay. Remember that we're working our rib basket. We're learning how to articulate this upper region of the body and not the whole lower region, all right? So if you swing and your whole body rotates, even the hips, see if you can keep the hips stable and rotate through your upper torso. Step your left foot be behind your right leg. Reach your arms up. Grab your left foot wrist with your right hand. Squeeze your inner thighs. If you need to keep both feet completely on the ground and not be high up on a toe, do that. And now let's try this. Round your spine first and now lean. Good. Squeeze your inner thighs. Allow your pelvis to be stable. And now as you're here, breathe and smile. and slowly lift back up, unwind, shake your arms out. And you can shake up behind. Okay, we're moving into something called squat climber. So bring your hands to your hips and bring your peace fingers right underneath your big hip protrusion bones and press that so you do your lap play again. And then come back up to standing. Yep, and you wanna bend your knees a little bit more. Keep shifting your hips back. Press and shift back, and I'll show you from the side as well. When you shift back, you wanna feel like you're actually pinching your fingers in between your thigh okay, and, your, and your belly. Lift back up, one more. Shift back. Fabulous, stand up. So keep working that hinge. Okay. Shift back, bring your left hand across your knees. So your left elbow balances on your left knee, left hand to your right knee. So we're fixing the pelvis and I'll show you from the side. Right hand behind your head and again, rotation. Elbow to opposite elbow and now open. Keep your hips steady. Cross the body and open. Go at your own pace here. A few times. Notice if you feel like you're pouring weight into your heels or if you have weight equally through the four corners of your feet. One more. Open. Okay, this time release and bow. Okay, and simply sway back and forth or be in stillness and grab opposite elbows. Bend your knees, let your head be really heavy. Again, hands to your hips. Slowly lift all the way up to standing. Okay, and shake it out a little bit. Hop up and down. Okay, you can shake. You can just bend the knees, or you can actually bounce a little bit. Okay, this helps to move the tissues and open up the lymphatic system. Nice. All right, back into your squat, shift back. Opposite hand crosses over your knees. Left hand behind your head. Cross and flex, and now open. Right, cross your body, flex, and extend. One more, cross and open. Actually, a couple more at your pace, in and out. Here and here. 
Good. From here, pop your hips high, fingers down to the floor, or they hang, let your head be heavy. Forward fold. Squat to kneel, so we're just going to bring our hands to the earth, lift high onto your toes, find your way down onto your knees, and sit back on your heels, or bring a couple blocks underneath your sit bones. So you might be sitting up really high, nice hands fall in your lap, I'll face you. Hands fall in your lap, close your eyes. And you want to be high enough that when we release the hands, you can swing your arms pretty freely. Okay, just so when you set yourself up, you can find that higher point. And then pause. You notice the pace of your heart. And if you can come into a space where you're slowing the breath down, okay, but you clearly notice the difference between okay, what it's like to increase your heart rate and what are your tools that you really have readily available to slow down, to center, and to arrive. Now let's find some freedom in the arms again. So if you're high enough, can you sway the arms back and forth? And now can you sway the arms so much that you swing them right up above your head, but it's effortless, okay? Swing, 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 arms above your head. Okay, and now pause, hands to your, your pelvis. And now from just your pelvis, don't do the swinging, Lift your arms up and bring your arms back down. And from here, lift your arms up and bring your hands back down. For me, I have to work a little bit harder, and it's really subtle, I have to actually work a little bit harder from not having any of this momentum to come up and my arms simply are just in space. When I lift, more muscles have to integrate in a really subtle way. So notice that when we get our arms up there and we keep figuring out, is it easy to get our arms up? Do they feel heavy? And are they heavier after you swing and you hold them up for five seconds? Or are they heavier if you are in this static shape and then you lift and you hold for five seconds? It might mean you need to measure for like 10 seconds or 15 seconds to figure out which one seems a little bit more challenging when you get the arms above your head. Okay, but this is a really good practice to notice if you are over efforting. And I can keep my arms above my head after the swing for a lot longer. And it's just something to notice, practicing stira sukha. Okay, slowly come down. Pop your hips forward, remove your props. We're going to get all the way up to standing today. You can find your way into downward facing dog or tabletop. You can choose which one really works for you. Step your right foot between your hands. Lift your back leg and glue your left heel down onto your mat. Okay, bring your hands to your hips. Lift all the way up to standing. Nice. Open up, warrior two. Okay, this is probably the first time we've been here in any of these classes. All right, so from here, practice pressing your feet apart and reaching your right palm forward. And then come back up. Nice. Press your feet apart on the earth and now reach forward and reach down slightly. Nice. One more. Press your feet apart. 
reach down slightly, straighten your right leg any amount, and bring your right hand to the highest height of your block. Reach your left arm up to the sky. This is called triangle pose. Okay, choose to land your gaze where your neck is the most neutral. Okay, straighten your leg a little bit more. Keep pressing your hips back and press your feet away from each other to help this hinge motion for your body to lean forward. Nice. Grab your block. Come all the way up to standing. Press, press into your feet. Rotate your toes to face the back of your mat and bring your block to the outside edge of your left foot. Okay, so you're gonna be facing away from the screen. Arms out, warrior two, bend forward into your left knee. Same thing, reach forward, shift your hips back, and press your feet away from each other. And come up, and again, press your feet away from each other, shift, and reach your left fingertips a little bit lower. And come back up. One more. Press and reach your fingers forward, feet far reaching apart, left hand to your block, right hand up towards the ceiling. Triangle pose. So gaze down at your left big toe towards maybe the corner of your mat or up all the way towards the ceiling. But if your neck is cranky, don't do it. Okay. okay. Keep pressing your hips back, strong core fully integrated feet on the earth. Okay, this time press into your feet, come all the way up to standing. You don't have to bring anything up with you. Toes face, the left side of your mat, hands to your hips. Okay, toes slightly in, heels out. Bow over your forward legs. Let your head be heavy. If you'd like, you can have a block underneath your hands and tip into one knee and then the other. This is called skandasana. Okay, so you can get a little deeper of a stretch or you can stay in stillness. Really practice the shape that feels best for your body. So if you like the movement, you can take the movement or if you like the stillness, you listen to that. This time, lift halfway up. You, if you have a block, remove your prop. Okay, walk your fingers forward, and we're gonna do a wide down dog. Okay, so you don't walk too far forward. Press your hips back. Okay, and now it's a wide kneel to heel. Drop your knees down to the earth, okay, and then slowly walk your knees in towards center. Okay. Sit up on your heels or on your sit bones. If you can do crisscross, that also works as well. And find yourself just simply on your seat. And we're gonna transition into more of the static shapes. And I wanna start us off in a transition with Nadi Shodhana, a centering breath for the right and left hemispheres of the brain. So if you feel like, just remember, if you feel like you're tipping back when you're sitting down, make sure you have a blanket underneath your sit bones or even a pillow so you can get your hips a little higher so you're not rounding back, but that you're actually kind of um, sitting higher up on your sit bones as your anchor. Okay, fabulous, you're all getting settled. Okay, so thumb, use your right hand, thumb, and your ring finger. Bring your thumb and your ring finger together. We're gonna be using both of these fingers. Bring your right thumb to your right nostril. Okay, and you're gonna plug the nostril. Your peace fingers come in, okay? Plug the right nostril, inhale through your left nostril. Plug your left nostril with your ring finger, exhale through your right. Inhale through your right. Plug your right nostril, exhale through your left. 
inhale through your left. Plug your left nostril, exhale through your right. Inhale right. Plug right, exhale left. Inhale left. Plug left, exhale right. Close your eyes, inhale right. Plug right, exhale left. Inhale left. left, exhale right, inhale right, plug right, exhale left, one more, inhale left, plug left, exhale right, Bring your right hand down to meet your left. Keep your eyes closed. And what is the felt experience in your body? Slowly blink your eyes open. Yes. If you are on a blanket with the hips lifted, remove your blanket. And you bring your hands alongside your hips. We're going to slowly transition onto our back by learning how to roll through our vertebrae. Okay, so we're mapping the spine, low back, mid back, upper back comes down. Slowly Come all the way back down, using your hands and forearms to support your body as you find yourself on the earth. Okay, so Nadi showed none of that breath that we were just doing. Real quick, bring your knees into your chest and simply hug in. And it gives us an opportunity to really um, feel more deeply into our center. So allow this bound up shape to a place that you feel held. And you can also grab behind the hamstrings if around the knees bothers you. Okay, and with our bolster, we're actually using the bolster today underneath the hips. I want more support, but it to be soft. So lift your hips and bring your bolster underneath your hips today. You might have, it might be slightly underneath your low back. Okay, you might not be as high as well if you're, depending on how stiff your bolster is. Okay, and pause here. A really gentle back bend, pretty neutral back bend is bridge. And bring your hands onto your lowest part of your ribs. And I want you to use your fingers to just palpate. Find out where the lowest part of your rib cage is on, is on the front side of your body. And maybe you need to press through your sternum bone, which is your chest bone, all the way down to then where your ribs begin to knit in towards your sternum. And then there's this kind of divot, like it's pretty low on the front side of your body, right at the base of the sternum and where the frontal rib cage meets. Okay. Bring both of sets, well, both of your hands, 
peace fingers into that divot place and palpate that space by just pressing in and out. As you press down, you lift your hands. And so when we palpate the body, it gives our brain signals that there's something we're working to address there. And what we're gonna practice is breathing into this one divot on the front side of our body while we're in supported bridge. So you're gonna wanna press your fingertips, your peace fingers, into that divot enough that the skin kind of pushes down. And this is the area I want you to breathe into as much as you can. And notice that when you breathe into this place, your fingertips actually begin to lift up. Don't lift your fingers, keep them there. Allow the breath and the movement of your diaphragm to begin to open this space up as you breathe. It might feel like you are just pressing your belly open. And for now, that's okay. okay. So your body knows that it can expand safely into this region. And breathe in here and breathe out. Keep going like this. I will make sure to let you know when we slowly adjust to the next position. Okay, the second piece of this is, can you allow the breath to be quiet? So if you have an audible breath, which means you can hear yourself breathe, okay, please work to quiet the breath. Okay, so your nervous system knows that it's safe to fully breathe and expand in this way. Let's move our hands now to our side body. So begin to palpate and figure out where is your hip bone. So you can use your thumbs on the side of your body to figure out, oh yeah, that's my hip bone. And then walk your thumbs up your side body and it's probably really close within an inch to two inches of your rib cage, the lowest part of your rib cage. That space that is a little squishy, that compresses and there's no bony protrusion. I want you to now use your thumbs, relax your shoulders, press into that place. Okay, and allow your fingertips to kind of bounce out as you press in. Okay, so now we're gonna move breath into this region. If you can have your attention into breathing into the front region of your belly that we were just working and your side body at the same time, you can continue to work that process or you can just bring all of your attention to when you press your thumbs into that soft tissue, okay, can this tissue expand on your inhale? I know for me, it's a lot easier for me to breathe into my left side of my body than it is my right. And that might be really typical. It also might be really subtle when you start to practice this style of breath that we actually know how to do really intuitively, okay, but we sometimes forget that our diaphragm can expand this much that spaciousness can be created in these different quadrants of our body. Okay, and if we can learn to breathe a little bit more fluidity, 
fluidly in this way. And it's truly a measure of health. This is the breath of centering. This is the complete opposite of hyperventilation. So let us remember that this is how we breathed when we were babies out of the womb. Yeah, but with like all the hustle and bustle and choosing to do different activities, our breath can transform Sometimes it doesn't function as it used to. One more breath in here. Breathe deeply in. Fill, fill, fill. Notice just on the exhale, the, the side body comes in and settles. The low belly settles down, but you're not hugging and squeezing anything. It just happens naturally. Okay, and now this time bring your hands to your upper chest and you begin to run your fingers right underneath your collarbones. Okay, so you can feel your collarbones and then run your fingertips of okay, all five fingers or just four fingers about your thumb underneath your collarbone. Okay, waking up that tissue in the direction of your sternum and then your outer pecs. And allow your hands to rest right above your nipples right below your collarbone. And as you breathe, okay, see if you can get the belly to open up before the chest lifts. that it opens and you're breathing at the exact same time. Both the chest and the belly are lifting. Okay, so direct the breath low and wide. And notice how there's like a wave-like effect of the breath that can move up into your chest. This could take someone easily a year to learn how to repattern the breath mechanics to do. So if you're just, it seems really elusive at this point, know that it's a continued practice. It's not something that happens overnight. Keep breathing in this way, a few more breaths. Okay, and take a full breath in, fill up, fill up, fill up, and exhale, blow your air out. Okay, release your legs out long. And now you're gonna tip over onto your belly. Okay, and you're gonna want your block or your bolster, whichever one is close to you and has some height. Okay, I'm gonna use my block and we're gonna set up for half frog. This is excellent if you know frog pose and the knees both are out and it really bugs your knees. This is helpful for anyone with knee issues. Okay, so your right leg is long. I have my blanket underneath my forehead and usually I just rest my cheek on the side of the blanket. Bring your left knee as high as you can alongside your left rib cage. Right leg is long, right cheek to your blanket. Arms can be alongside your body or you can cactus your arms. Okay, so we're working to create an open space in the left inner groin. 
Okay, the block might be really uncomfortable. You actually might want a blanket on top of your block or your bolster. So really set yourself up to be here for a period of time, okay, but you're not initially really uncomfortable. So go ahead and remember, really close your eyes, have the memory of the breath pattern that we just began to develop on our back. And see if you can invite that style of breath mechanics into your body as you are now laying on your belly. Okay, your front low, your belly expanding and your side ribs expanding. And let this breath actually detox you, actually remove any thoughts that are in form grasping or allow any stagnation tissue that is bound to learn what spaciousness is. And it's actually more of a relearning, a remembering. Because when we come out of the womb, we're, we're born... Um, totally whole and our limbs are going to grow and they're going to move as they're supposed to but it's the patterning over time how we do our everyday habits that shift the way in which our body operates and it's like one of the best examples I can give and we're not doing anything with the feet right now but you immediately put a child in shoes, the children's feet conform to those shoes. Okay? Instead of learning like to walk barefoot on the earth and use and articulate all of the small, small joints of the foot, okay? and that actually affects our balance over time. It is similar to like sitting in a chair we're always sitting in a chair slumped back and rounded. We have a lot, we, have, we change the access of like how to sit up with a more structural posture and breathe a little bit more freely. And sitting, sitting positioning can really bound our body. And we're creatures that are meant to move. And part of this movement is our breath. So as you're in this static shape, allow the breath to be the one thing that's actually moving you right now, or that you have conscious control of moving. Okay, one more full deep breath in. And the breath out. Find your way, left knee back alongside your body. So the legs match. Okay, and take this half pigeon position on the opposite side. And this time, drag your right knee up along your right rib cage. Bring your cheek to one side. Okay, and choose the side of your cheek that you didn't do. And this shape really, uh, time is our most gracious ally. 
can end over time in any static pose. Emotions come up. Sensation becomes much more prevalent and present in the body. And the practice always coming back to how can you be in relationship with those thoughts or the sensation and to not let the thoughts or the sensation hold you back, keep you bound or stuck. the practice of healing, being with discomfort and moving through it. Take three more deep breaths at your pace. And without feeling any need to actually rush the process and move out of the shape quickly. That you have all of the time in the world to shift. When you are ready, can you bring your right knee down alongside your body and find your way onto your back and with your head, the back of your head on a blocket and depending on what you have available, either your bolster underneath your knees okay, or two blocks underneath your knees. If you have any other props that you can put on top of your body, like your blocks, you can also do that for additional weight. Okay, I really like putting the a block on top of my pelvis. Okay, it brings that additional like weightedness, like a, a sand blanket. to come back into the place of feeling held and safe. And wherever you end up, allow your palms to be facing up towards the ceiling. Close your eyes. And any breath that you're controlling, soften the breath. Safer in this place. And for the rest of the practice of Shavasana. <laughs> 